Wednesday the 10th of January 2024 and it is a pleasant good morning and a warm, uh, and a warm welcome to your program Good Morning Sega Leo, the program that always starts your day. I am Shaku Smiler and I am Francis Bernard and our quote of the day is from an American Lebanese businessman Nido Kuben and it says your present circumstances don't determine where you can go, they merely determine where you start. Coming up in the program this morning, we find out the significance of the one-year national tourism, domestic tourism campaign implementation strategy. The Minister of Planning and Economic Development to give updates on NGOs affairs in line with the new national medium-term development plan 2024 to 2030. And the Ministry of Employment, Labor and Security calls on employers in the country to register all your new workplace registration. We yeah. invite you to be part of the program by sending your comments and views to the number on your screen or you do follow us on our Facebook page at SRBC Channel 31. Wherever you are across the world, you follow us, send us your message in line with issues discussed here. We'll definitely read them out. The program is Good Morning, Sierra Leone. And it is reaching you live from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation Television. Well, you can be you can be part of this program by also following us up on the pro, on our Facebook page SBC Channel Thirty One. This is Good Morning Sierra Leone live from a Broadcasting House, the England Way in Freetown. is Good Morning Sierra Leone live on the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. Well now, the overreaching goal of instituting a robust domestic tourism campaign in Sierra Leone is to build the bedrock on which tourism in this country can flourish and delivers its benefits of economic diversification, prosperity, social cohesion and tolerance. Uh, awareness of tourism and the benefits of it is enormous. But in the studio to, to, to talk to us more about how this campaign is going is the general manager of the National Tourist Board, Madam Fatmata Kiru. Good morning, Madam Kiru. Good morning. And welcome to the program. Thank you. Now, domestic tourism is such an attractive uh, uh, growth, growth, growth sector, you know, um, business, you know, that, that can, you know, um, help to. Uh, you know, transmogrify uh, uh, you know every economy, but in Sierra Leone, you know, we have very attractive you know touristic sites, but much has not been done to utilize the potentials in, in so far as domestic and tourism is concerned. So let us talk about this campaign. You know, why the need for this campaign at this particular time, and what kind of approach this campaign is going to take or is taking already. So. Um as you rightly say, <clears throat> domestic tourism is a huge sector, a huge um, subsector within the tourism sphere. And um, over the years, I would say, not just for Sierra Leone, much countries are not be paying much attention on domestic tourism. Mm -hmm. You know, but the COVID was an eye opener for all of us. When international travelers came to a halt, people depending on domestic tourism. And for us in Sierra Leone, 
A lot of people are engaged in domestic tourism, but because they lack the knowledge or the concept or what the understanding of what domestic tourism is all about, they don't even know what they're doing is domestic tourism. So with um, this year has been dedicated as our Tourism for All campaign. It's the Tourism for All campaign, which means tourism business, now all man business. Tourism has the potential to promote the economy, social, um, 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 uh, the social, uh, the social cultural aspect of tourism. Mm -hmm. It also has the potential to, to to create a formidable force within any country. Of course, it also speaks to the environment. How? Because the asset that we have are within the environment. So it creates some of the, this awareness. So the tourism for all campaign is for. We have a logo which we have already developed. We have, as we are using the national animal, which is the chimpanzee. Many of us don't even know that Sierra Leone chimpanzee is our national animal, and we want that to change. So we we are every single month we have a thing, and we try to bring up activities that speaks to that thing. So for a start, like January, it's the explore and discover. What do you discover? You need to discover your tourism assets, your tourism potential. We are starting, we are having a program this on Sunday the 14th, which is the first program. Ex explore your cuisine. Food is part of your discovery. So we are having this program at Radin City. And then of course on, in, in January we have create an innovation. In March we have travel and hospitality. April, we have Gateway to Freedom. Of course, May, we have Culture and Heritage. And June, we have Monuments and Relics. And then August, we should, um, July, we have Environment Awareness for Tourism. Then August, Partner and Promotion. September, Tourism Multiplier Benefits. October, Women in Tourism. November, Wildlife and Conservation. And December, festivity and entertainment. So all the programs activity will be boxed within the theme so of this. Madam Keru, these are all good ideas and you have Sierra Leoneans, as you rightly said, even when they travel within, they are not aware of what they are doing. But how are you going to factor the ordinary Sierra Leoneans in this your project lined up? Because taking you to Gladys in Blue, first of all, some people when they hear the name Gladys in they have their own perception. But if you really want to let Sierra Leoneans be part of it, then you have to look for, yes, that is in is good. Maybe you look for another venue where all Sierra Leoneans can access maybe the, 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 the amusement park. Okay, so I was just going to look for the different prizes mm -hmm. we have. The highest, which is 1,000 for a family of six. Okay. 1,000 1, newlyweds for, new for a family of six mm -hmm. and then for a family of, of three, four, I think the prices stem from 250 up to 1,000 okay. newlyweds being the highest. And we were in fact trying to do it within um, um, the ministry itself. That was where we wanted to do it. But then when we seek the views of different people, say so well, we wanted, we want to have more people to come in. So we were looking for a bigger space. Okay. And since um, Lomley Beach, this thing is at the heart of one of our touristic sites, we decided to do it at Lomley Beach to have more, the garden, it's not at Radisson, it's, a, it's a the Radisson garden, so that we have more people coming in, okay, to explore culture, food, so look at drinks, and it's a, a, it's a place. No, but I'm curious. Let us talk about it. domestic tour, domestic and, 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 and tourism is is a group. In fact, tourism in general, you know, is is a growth sector. You know, in so far as you know, building the economy is concerned. But the thing is, now some of these um, touristic sites that we have as a country are sites that are not that are not more tourable at all. Sorry, these are sites that are not more tourable, and for people to get attracted to some of these sites, you know, they must be attractive. You know, so you make some facilities for them, where they go there, they feel belonged. So what are you doing to make these sites, you know, across the country actually attractive? So I will say to you that um, um, 
most of the sites that we are promoting, most of the sites are motorable. For those places that are not motorable, I believe the ministry under the sector that is responsible, they are funding, they are funding allocated to develop some of these rules. But let's talk about even those that are uh, motorable. Okay, you go to Bo. You go to, let's say, it is home to Pujaun, Matujon, around that vicinity in the south. It's home to Tiwai Island. Tiwai Island is motorable. It's motorable. But there are other, other places, like for example, now, you know, somebody might want to go to certain places. Like for example, you go to school, you are taught about uh, Bones Island, for example, and you don't have access to Bones, probably except to use them. Um, uh, the sea for many people, you know, I don't know those living around. Because around, it's, around. The, it's just where it is situated. Yes, for sure. That, that is a geographical location. But, but the thing is that how? Which is the, no, the thing is now domestic uh, 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 tourism. You go to places like China, you compete with the Chinese, you know, to go see um, uh, 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 the Tiananmen Square uh, and even the the, 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 the the Great Wall. Some of them have been in China for many years, they've not seen those places. So when you go there, you compete with them for you know, for, for you know to see that those particular sites. So that is the same thing that you know we are expecting uh, from the National Tourism Board. You make these places more motivable so that uh, you make them so attractive. But when we go there, then we, when if we have foreigners there as well, we compete with the foreigners to see you know, the sites. So we are we are, the focus here is domestic tourism. Mm -hmm. So domestic tourism, you compete within yourself. Banana Island competes with Bons Island. Okay, TY competes with Gola. Gola competes with uh, the competition is within. Okay, so let me say this to you. Um, these places that we are talking about, most of these places, they are motorable. They are places with unique facilities and they are places that as I speak to you, even local Sierra Leoneans, those that are aware, are also going there. But in Bones Island, for example, you know, just because of the geographical, uh, you know, I mean, the geography of that particular place, yes, yes, yes. that is why you, you have to use the sea to go there. Yeah. But the thing is that, you know, I've been to Bones Island, you know, several times. There are some people who tell me, they, you know, when they go to Bones Island, they don't just want to go out to spend a day or two. They want a place where they can have shelter. Probably they will be there for for one for, for one week or two, you know. But when you go to Boss Island, there is no place to go to rest. There is no place to have fun, to have recreation. So, so you cannot have an activity within the island. If you notice, it, the, the island itself, the Bones Island, should be within its authentic state. You cannot have something there. Some other countries, some other fits for they have already tampered with the authenticity. We haven't done that. When you go there, it's been maintained, but it should be in its raw form. The language should be in its raw form. So that is where we come in. That is where the five is set to come in. That is why we are dedicating a whole month, like August, to talk about partner and promotion. You know, tourism is a private sector driven. That is why we talk about, we, it, it's government provide enabling the environment. But it is the private sector that should go around the vicinity of Tess or maybe the island before Banana Island to develop the resorts or the ecologies or the restaurants. Okay? So do it's not that is not for government. That is the private sector. That is why within this promotional one year promotional campaign, we have to talk about incentives. We have to talk about the policies that are there for private sector to undertake investment. Okay, Madam Kim, um, talking about local tourism. If you go to Bond and Bond Island, not Bonds, Bonds. So you have I had the, the remains of Shingle Shingle Pier mm -hmm. is there. And you and I know that Shingle Pier is not only known in Sierra Leone but worldwide because of what happened, because of our history. So this also is a, a, is supposed to be a touristic site. But the last time I went to Bond and then my Grandmother said, Oh, she will be in grave day and that poor bush. How could that be in the bush so, where people could not access? Because people want to see, people want to know about this shame repair. They want to just want to visit that. For me, I was very eager to go there, but I can't go there because of the situation around it. So 
what do you think you are not doing or you should do to make sure that you make these places open to even local tourists as you are talking about? For example, my kids wanted to go there, but they can't because of the situation. So I believe that it is within the strategic plan of the monuments and relics. Okay. The monuments and relics are the ones that are entitled to the conservation and protection of our relics. Mm -hmm. And one of them is the Singapore grave. Already they have done something for the Bible grave. Okay. And I know that they have it in their strategic plan to develop this island. But even though some of this, we are not saying that every of our relics or attractions are ready. Okay. They are ready. That is not what I'm saying. Even the richest countries in the world, they are still developing their domestic territory. Well, they are still the, developing the, their side. Is, but what I'm saying to you, we want Sierra Leoneans mm -hmm. to understand that there are places like this. Yes. To appreciate the significance of these places. And also to see how they can put themselves together to do the local community. Put, get themselves ready to for people to develop packages yeah, that are you in that line so this because is why some people in both does not know that there is well, this is why we are embarking on this rigorous one-year campaign okay. to bring to light some of these things so that to educate these people okay mm -hmm. so these things are there but then in the at the same way we have some attraction that are already ready okay that are ready okay but, but i'm hearing now the question is you know probably uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, you know uh, what is what uh, francis was saying okay. now this one's semi -pier. Is, 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 is part of global history. Mm -hmm. As far as the transatlantic slave trade is concerned, he is there. He's very strategic. Now, and people want to see where he was buried. And now, the, 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 the quagmire is his grave is in the poorer bush. <laughs> So, so how can you have so then this is the this is the interesting <laughs> thing about tourism. Sometimes you need it all depends. Okay, Papa Bush, I don't think they will want to bring whatever they have to the public. We must respect it's their tradition. We must respect that's no domestic tourism is not going to tell you that is why domestic tourism we are pushing, we have to respect the culture and traditions of people. We are not saying because we want to promote, we want people to know. But we could do, the MRC could come together and do a symbolic something. That is what I'm saying. And I don't even want to sit here and start discussing it. Okay? But what I'm saying, imagine when you go to Wara. We have developed the Warawai Hills, and it's one of our youth tourist attractions for both domestic tourism and as well as international tourism. So what we have done, we know that some of the stories, they have rich stories, even with their secret society. We're not saying expose it, but what the people are doing, they are developing a, pro a, 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 a program, storytelling. That when the tourists or when the locals are there, they develop an activity on storytelling, explaining to these people without having them exposing them, yeah. taking them to their mm -hmm. traditional mm -hmm. um, uh, um, society bush. That is not what we're saying. But we could do something like that. Yes. Okay? Those are packages that we do. And then you say something. I also want you to know that throughout the, the one year campaign, the private sector, our hotel and tourism association, and our local tour operators, they are also bringing very reasonable packages okay. for the general public so that they will be selling. Okay. Come and see. I hope you people will jump into it. But having said that, we are also, as private sector, the tourism board, the minister of tourism, the MLC, we are also developing tours for specific for university for some of our for artists selected people that will go down and of course you guys are our partner SABC AYV you guys are our partner 98 you guys are going to be our partner because when we go on some of these promotional trips to these places we want you to help us tell the story all right thank you very much madam Kerry continues to stay with us she is the general manager of the national tourist board she is madam Fatima Takeru. we continue with the program and now we go to something that has to do with planning and development the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development, NGO Directorate, is responsible in aligning delivery. The unit register and certifies NGOs. This is necessary to get NGOs submit their annual report on programs implemented and gives government the opportunity to determine the performing NGOs and non-performing ones to give updates on NGOs affairs, including registration, nationwide verification, issues of slang, as well as the relation of these issues in the new national medium-term national development plan 2020-2024.
2024 to 2030. We have in the studio Director of NGO Affairs, Moped, Eric Masali. Good morning, Mr. Masali. Welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. Okay, so let's talk about this new national medium term national development plan that you people have put together. Let's talk about it, and particularly in relation to non governmental organizations. Yep, so we are developing the succession plan to the medium term national development plan. You know, the medium term national development plan was for five years, 2018 to 2023. And so, as I speak, we are in consultations trying to see how we can get the buy of stakeholders, of course, beneficiaries. Um, in this new plan, basically, the plan speaks to government priorities for the next seven years, because it's no longer five years. And uh, where well, once the plan is developed, government by itself cannot provide all the resources to actualize the targets that are enshrined in the plan. So we rely on development partners, we rely on donors to see how they can join government in the actualization of the plan. So NGOs play a critical role because they complement government in the actualization of the plan. So the, the, the ministry, in, co in collaboration with the NGOs, are currently working on the, we're developing a plan and of course ensuring that their programs are properly aligned with the medium term national development. We're in the succession plan to the MTNDP. No, Mr. Masali, talk to us about um, you know uh, what has happened so far since you you you, you developed you know and the uh, you know development cooperation framework working with NGOs. I know when it started, NGOs were jittery. They thought you wanted to interfere into their business, you know, and monies they they, they receive uh, from uh, from donors. Well, these are monies on behalf of the people of Sierra Leone, the government and the people of Sierra Leone. Jittery. But at some point, you, you came here and you told us that um, you, you've reached a point. You know, you are now on the same page. So let us know how the implementation of that uh, development cooperation framework is going. Yeah, I think I must say it has been very successful. We've been able to meet, to accomplish a lot. Um, one, as I speak now, we've been able to strengthen relationship, which is the bedrock. We've been able to strengthen relationship between government and of course the non-governmental organizations who've been able to track, to act, to get information on projects, uh, information and of course track the implementation of this of this of this project. Now an organization as rightly said when we, when it all started, say for instance, the issue of them signing the service level agreement, it was daunting. Well, as we speak now, they've all appreciated it. Now for every project NGOs do have, they visit the visit the line ministries, they sign the service level agreement and they take the, the, the government through the implementation of this project. We've been able to minimize duplications at both national and district level. Uh, as we speak, all projects are now being implemented with the local councils. Of course, we've now been able to get that sense of ownership. Community stakeholders, beneficiaries are now involved okay. in the implementation of projects. <laughs> so we are short of sustainability. Now, the thing is that you, know, um, you, you spoke about duplication you know, of, um, uh, of, of projects. We are comes in the issue of needs assessment. A certain NGO will go to a, to a, in a particular community, well, without even asking people what they want, what they need, they will just start implementing projects. Like, for example, the people in a particular village want, uh, let's say, for example, um, a school. An NGO goes there and construct, and construct a market. So what happens? The market will become a white elephant. So, in the area of um, in the area of needs assessment, that is also where you know uh, moped should come in strongly. So, what should we be doing to ensure that um, projects are not duplicated? Needs assessment is done as well. So, as part of the project formulation, I think the first step is needs assessment, as you rightly said. Um, if you look again, going to the service level agreement, an C of the service uh, a component of an C of the service level agreement speaks to sustainability plan and on a sustainability plan the first the first thing we look at has to do with needs assessment because like we said there is need for organizations to implement projects that meets the needs of the people the beneficiaries we actually want to see white elephant as you as you alluded we we now ensure that in the formulation of projects needs assessment and, and the report is very very key so when they come for registration be it the registration of the, of the project or the issuance of certificates, we ensure we get that report. 
And it's not just about doing the needs assessment, but we also encourage them to ensure that the community people, the stakeholders and the beneficiaries are involved in the implementation of the project. Their capacities have been built, that structures have been set, huh? and of course, skills transferred to this place. So at the end of the day, when the organizations leave, we are assured of continuity of the project. So this assessment is very, very key. And for all organizations implementing projects, we ensure that they do needs assessment before they formulate the project. What about the money? The money uh, how do you track monies that come in? You know, because that is one area that is very key. Because you cannot just be receiving money without, you know, um, the government of Sierra Leone knowing that uh, you've received a certain amount of money from a certain donor to come implement projects in this country. Like you said, the national, the middle term uh, development plan will have to be, um, every, every project that is done by an NGO has to be, you know, aligned with what government wants for its people. Yeah. So how do you track the finances of that coming? So we've agreed with the organizations that at least seven, we, we also went the extra mile to develop what is considered to be direct cost and indirect cost, which we all agreed on, and that is what they are working with. As part of the service level agreement, before the government signed agreement with organizations, we ensure we look at the project, the activities, your deliverables and activities, and an expected outcome. And above all, we look at the resources available, how you intend utilizing those resources. So we look at all the components based on the direct and indirect cost we've agreed on, look at all the components, agree eh, on the component, the resources, how you are going to use these resources, and the government goes into agreement with you. They sign the service level agreement. And when once the service level agreement is signed, government ensures that they track progress for each activity that you've agreed on. Okay. So as, as we speak, it's it's we now we are now in a better position to one track progress in implementation of projects and above all to know and advise or ensure that the resources are judiciously utilized by the so NGOs. As you as you speak. Are you in a better place to tell us uh, the number of NGOs registered with MOPED and um, if so, how effective are, are some of these NGOs? Because some of them are just there, they are registered with your with um, MOPED, but in actual fact, they are not existing. So we have 309 national NGOs mm -hmm. and then we have 106 international that are registered wow. with MOPED. Yeah. Um, there is a partnership mapping tool that shows who is doing what, where, when, and why. You understand? We have that tool that is up and running. There is a link. And that, well, of course, the tool provides information on all the activities of the organizations, their projects they're implementing, their registration status, the locations, and everything. So we have that tool that is in existence. Also, we have a monitoring mechanism. So when once you sign as a right so when once you sign the service level agreement, there's a mechanism on a quarterly basis, jointly, mm. we monitor them. We go to the field, we track progress. Again, we've empowered the local councils because it's local councils are the the, the government at local level. Let me use that word for better use of word, yeah. They are government at local level. And so we've also empowered them to one, get information, know the information about projects that are being implemented by these NGOs, and above all to ensure that they are part of the implementation. So they also monitor at that level. And of course, that is why we've been able to get these coordination platforms established. Okay. At local level, you have the DPOs that are coaches to the coordination platforms, and of course, they ensure All right. They Thank you so much, Mr. Mansele. We shall be talki uh, talking to you. We shall be coming to you again, because there is an issue at hand. Mm -hmm. The issue that, uh, the issue that has to do with Slambo. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, the national coordinator, Another national coordinator will come to that later. <laughs> but the program you're watching is Good Morning Sierra Leone, live on the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation Television.